Hello, hunters! Just Sheep Cure here, and welcome back to Pokemon Leaf Green! Last time, we went through the Safari Zone. And this time, we're going to take on the fifth gym. Koga's gym, the poison type gym, supposedly. Let's start off by battling some trainers. Let's see you beat my special techniques! And this gym has something in it that I'll explain after this battle, and so much for being a poison type gym, this guy's got psychic types! Anyway, I got Doduo in here now, and it has an adamant nature. I didn't have to re I didn't have to catch more Doduos for this. He already had an adamant nature. I am not even kidding. And wow, not even evolved me. He's just as strong as Starmie. And King Forever remains the only female. But yeah, I could have had Doduo evolve by now, but I didn't evolve him for two reasons. One, because I want to evolve him on screen, and two, because. There's a certain move that Doduo learns at the next level that he wouldn't learn until 10 levels later as a Dodrio. So that's why I wanted to keep Toby as a Doduo for now. And now we get to see him in action. And I actually used my rare candies to get Doduo up to level 36. I didn't want to grind it out, I decided it was finally time to use my rare candies. And I feel like there, there couldn't have been a better time to use them. And wow, good job, Kadabra. Maybe Ariel will one-shot you. Yeah, it does. And by the way, I've made some adjustments to my team as well. Might as well go over them now. My Doduo here, I taught him fly. He also has the TMs for air release and stealing. Patrick's moveset is the same as last time. Curtis now has strength instead of thrash. Bolt is the same. King now has cut instead of when I taught her strength last time, and Doug is also the same. I decided to have all the t all the HMs throughout my entire team. So yes, unfortunately, that means no more Meowth in here. I know, Meowth was the all-star member of the team, picking up rare candies and berries, and serving as an HM slave. But Meowth's role has come to an end. Maybe he'll return in the future, but for now, his, his time has come to an end. It's all about my team now. And yo, champ of the making, Fuchsia City, Fuchsia's gym is a tricked up place. It's real visible walls. Koga might appear close, but he's blocked off. You have to find gaps in the walls to reach him. And that's the special thing in the gym I was talking about. There are some invisible walls here. There actually is a way to tell the difference between the invisible walls and the other tiles. There's some white pixels at the corners of the invisible walls, as you see. And everywhere else, those aren't a thing, so that's how you can actually see the invisible walls. But for now, we're just gonna battle this guy here. Strength isn't the key for Pokémon. Do you understand this? Pokémon is about strategy! I'll show you how strategy can beat brute strength. Patrick gets a level up. Unfortunately, Toby doesn't. What's extraordinary? Once Toby levels up, he'll learn Drill Peck, and I'll teach it to him, and then I'll let him evolve into Dodrio, and then he'll be much must faster and stronger. I was a magician once upon a time. But I jumped to becoming a ninja, so I joined this gym. Toby grew to level 37. And now, Drill Pack. I only used it once, but I'm getting rid of Aerial Ace. Now we have an 80 base power flying move, as well as an 80 base power normal move, both of which are physical. So we're gonna be doing amazing now. And by the way, the adamant nature is pretty much the best nature you could possibly have for a Doduo and Dodrio. Jolly could be good too, but Adamant is amazing. Raises your attack and lowers your special attack. Dodrio is not going to be using special attacks. It can be going all physical, so that is ideal. And now... Toby is evolving. Dodrio. One of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon personally, and it's an amazing Pokemon. Let's see just how much faster and stronger it is now. It's almost as strong as Doug. And pretty dang fast. The only one he the only ones he doesn't outspeed, I think, are Bolt and Patrick. Wait, I don't think he outspeeds King either. That's just because King has a, a speed boosting nature though, I think. Yeah, Toby pretty dang fast and pretty powerful as well. I'd say a great member of our team. And now we're going to keep going through the gym here. You! I also study the way of the ninja with Master Koga. Ninja have a long history of using animals. Patrick's probably going to be the 
main star in the in the actual gym battle. <laughs> no pun intended. I was I wasn't even meaning for that to be a pun. You, you guys probably won't believe me, but I'm serious. I think we just got two more trainers left. Stop right there! The famed invisible walls of future gym have me frustrated. No, because I know how to navigate this gym by now. And what you got? Some more R box and sand slashes. Yeah, level 38 on Toby. What I like to see. Right on upper. You tried doing that as a do duo as well, and I didn't take it then. I'm not gonna take it now. Although it's pretty, although it's a pretty impressive 90 base power in later generations. In this generation, it's a, it's a 50 base power, so it is not better than Tri Attack in this instance. Although, although if it was that 90 base power, I would consider it. Although you are locked into it for a while, so I'm still not quite sure, but. It would have been something I considered at least. And Toby did hit level 38, so that's going to be his last battle for now. Whoa, you got it! Yeah, I do got it. Anyway, Toby did pretty good for, for his debut battles, just like pretty much all my other team members. My three newest team members, they've had they've all had really good debut battles. I guess th th that's just that just shows that just shows you guys how good those Pokémon really are in this game. Master Koga comes from a long line of ninjas. What did you descend from? Hypno goes down, and Patrick gets the experience. Patrick, Patrick might get o a bit overleveled in the gym battle, because he's level 38, and he's going to be the one I'm using in this upcoming gym battle. But we're going to go with things either way. Here we go! Fwa ha ha A mere child like you dares to challenge me? The very idea makes, my shi makes me shiver with mirth. Very well, I shall show you true terror as a ninja master. Poison rings that you do. Sleep renders throws helpless. Despair to the creeping horror of poison type Pokemon. Yes, someone in this gym other than the chambers who actually uses poison types. Leader Koga would like to battle has four Pokemon. Starting with coughing here. Level 37. They are indeed in our level range. So we want to pull all the stops and try to defeat them. And Psyche does one shot. Don't know if that critical was pointless or not. Although knowing me, it probably was. What do you got next, Koga? Muck. That, that's actually not his main Pokemon. His main Pokemon is actually better than Muck. And oh, that's not fun. Hopefully, I can still land a hit. Knowing my luck, I won't. But I gotta hope. Okay, there we go. We do land a hit. Nice. And Muck is out of here. Level 38 on Patrick. We're still going to continue to use Patrick throughout the, throughout the rest of this battle. What do you got next? Coughing? Okay, your main Pokemon is Coughing's evolved form. So we'll be saying that after you, Mr. Coughing. Actually, he's Mr. with Mail. And Patrick's not going to get overleveled. Good. And yep. Here is his ace, wheezing level 43. Getting over level kind of fast. This isn't even the, the big level jump I was talking about. Of the big level jump later on in the game, this is not it. But yeah, we one shot it either way. Patrick is just that good. Hm, you've proven your worth. Here, take the soul badge. And with that, this, the fifth Kanto gym badge is ours. With that, the defense of our Pokemon rises. And we get to use Surf outside of battle. So now we can explore more of the Safari Zone. And we get TMO6. Toxic. It's a secret technique dating back some 400 years. Yes, and Toxic, although you may not think it at first glance, is a move that any Pokemon that can learn a TM can learn. Pretty much. It's going on King, though. Time to get rid of that Poison Powder and give him an upgrade. Because I said way earlier in this series that there are two types of poison. Regular poison and badly poison. Poison powder gives regular poison, toxic gives badly poison. And for stalling, toxic is way better in every way. Not only is the move more accurate, but it, the, the badly poison is better. That has it to where the opponent, to where the Pokemon who is badly poisoned, takes damage that that gradually increases every turn. So yeah, that's great for stalling. If there's something King can't deal with with Brute Force, or if he's run out of PP on all his attacks, or he just can't hit his opponent, then Toxic should do the job well. And Leech Seed combined with that is pretty good as well. Fun fact, in the original Generation 1, Leech, Seed would, Leech Seed's damage would stack alongside Toxic, so... The Toxic-Leech Seed combo in Generation 1 was absolutely busted. 
Even though it's not as busted nowadays, it is still great, though. Don't, don't be mistaken. It is a combo you don't really want to underestimate. Now that we can use Surf outside of battle, we're going to finish exploring the Safari Zone. We're just going to make our way to all the places that are exclusive with Surf, though. Places that you can only get to with Surf, that's what I'm going to say. I'm pretty sure there is both a hidden item and an exposed item over here. Hidden item, where are you? No, not you. There it is, a Leaf Stone! I was thinking Nugget before, but no, it's a Leaf Stone. There is a Nugget here, though. Maybe that's how I got, got it mixed up. We can cross this water now. If we had the badge before entering the Safari Zone at all, we could have just done that easily and probably gotten all items in one go. I think that is how you get all items in one go. I do think that's all the items in the Safari Zone. I don't think there's any more. Oh my goodness, finally! Finally I find this stupid thing. It took forever. I went for a 4% encounter rate. I found two Torals before this thing even decided to show up. I'm gonna get flee there. Gosh, the thing took forever to show up. I just gotta go back to catch it. Well, it's all up to chance, they say. Just like Pokemon, those make it punch as well. Can I catch it? Please, please. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you, game. Thank you for at least being generous enough to let me have it after not giving it to me for so long. Finally, I found Chansey. And with that, there was only... I, I decided to catch all the surfing and fishing Pokemon off-screen. And with that, there's only one Pokemon in this entire Safari Zone I haven't found, and that is Dratini's Evolved Dragonair. I'm going to try to search for that. I doubt I'll find it, but I'm going to search for it for a little while, until I completely lose patience and give up. Okay, guys, we found it. 1% Dragonair. It didn't take as long as I thought. Let's see if we can catch it now. One, two, three! Ooh, yes! And with that, we have captured every single type of Pokémon you can find here at the Safari Zone. A mystical Pokémon that exudes a gentle aura. It is said to have the ability to change the weather. Interesting. Oh yeah, we got everything now. Everything we could possibly get in the Safari Zone. Look how much the Safari Zone alone filled up our Pokédex. Filled up our PC, I mean. Why did I say Pokédex? Well, it did fill up our Pokédex quite a bit. But I was talking PC here. It starts from here. It filled up this much. This is how much Pokémon there are in the Safari Zone. I even caught the rarest of the rare. Like Kangaskhan, Pinsir, Tauros, Chansey, and even the fabled Dragonair. Also, Venomoth and Parasect, just because. We caught a lot of Pokemon today, and now it's a good time to end the episode. Next time on Pokemon Leaf Green version, we'll be exploring the surrounding routes. Maybe we'll also deal with that other Snorlax that's been blocking our way around Celadon City. I'll see you guys then. Happy hunting. Hold on, we are not ending the episode yet. I, I just figured there'd, there'd, there could be a few more things we could do during this episode, just because... There are a few trainers in surrounding routes that we can fight. There's not a, like a big bunch of them, it's just a few, so we can battle them real quick. Just to make this episode a, still a bit longer, because the recording was barely over 20 minutes. This isn't going to stretch the recording to 30 minutes, but it's going to make the overall video probably still longer than 20 minutes. Yeah, the video would end up being really short if I ended it off right where I said it would end. So we're just going to battle these trainers first. I don't know why I have Patrick up front. Oh yeah, I have Patrick up front to increase the encounter rate of the areas. Cause you get you get random you get wild encounters more often with with Pokemon with the ability to illuminate up front, and Patrick does have that ability. And I had him up front throughout the Safari Zone, so I could encounter Pokemon more often. I wish it increased the encounter rate of rare Pokemon. It doesn't, unfortunately, though. I mean, if it did, I would have found Chansey a lot sooner, I'm sure. Anyway, all warmed up. And, and time to actually give someone else some screen time here. King will actually do pretty good against this guy here. Wait, slow down! You'll have a heart attack! I don't see how I'll have a heart attack. But... I'm gonna take down your Pokemon either way. The Safari Zone! had quite a lot to do in it, but we finally took care of all of that between last episode and this one. There's quite a lot to do in there, especially if you want to get all the Pokemon. Of course, I do recommend getting all the items at least. And there are some pretty useful Pokemon in there as well, such as Tortini, Tauros, and quite a few others. 
if you didn't, if you missed your opportunity to get any of the Nidorans earlier in the game, the Safari Zone is the perfect place to to get to actually get them again. If you missed your chance before and you don't want to backtrack and then have to grind up, so yeah, Safari Zone is good for a lot of things. It's also required because you need to go in there to get two of the HMs, which both of those actually use quite a lot, believe it or not. Oh, that's chilly. So now let me take on the few bird keepers over here to the west. These are all the trains I wanted to battle, and I figured I'd talk over these battles because I have a few things to say, and the original recording is pretty short, so I figured I'd make the episode a bit longer that way. He checks every grass area, grassy area for Pokemon. I do the same thing. Well, actually, I just check the guides in the Pokedex. Oh, whatever. And King can still do good against these Spearows if I just use Cut here. Should be a nice two-shot. Not a one-shot, unfortunately. But they won't give us trouble either way, it's just Spiro. I think King's gonna get a little up by the end of this. Not, the, not by the end of this battle, by the end of all these battles. Hopefully this is still a two-shot. No, it's not. I wish it was. Well, if we get a critical we actually need for once, it will be a two-shot, but... I haven't gotten a... I haven't gotten a good critical in quite a while. I've gotten caught up quite a lot of pointless criticals lately, though. I figured that would happen throughout this entire series. And, yep, King grows level 37. Go. And Birdkeeper Wilton wants to be. This is my turf. Get out of here. We actually did get to level 37 by the end of that battle. I didn't think we would, but he had a Fero, so that did happen. And Birdkeeper Jacob. Maybe we can one shot the Spearows now that we've leveled up? Yes, we can. Awesome. That makes these battles go by so much quicker. Anyway, the Grass Starter. It is incredibly useful early on in the game. It isn't as useful later on as it is in the early parts of the game. But I still consider it the best starter because it helps you early on. And doing good early on is always a great thing. And also, you will have built up a good team at this point, so you won't be only using Venusaur. So yeah, just having the grass starter and then building up a good team off of that is what I always like to do in, in this playthrough, in this game. And not only can we one-shot the Spearows now, but we can also two-shot the Spearows. Nice. Darn! This is my fave area for catching Pokemon. I wish I had a bike. I guess they can't go on Cycling Road. Cool, cool, cool. How do you like my bird call? Uh, I don't think any birds other than yours liked it. And I personally didn't find it that impressive either, Mr. Birdkeeper Ramiro. You got a Dodrio, though. That's impressive. I had to bug you. I click Sea Pokemon on weekends because the sea is so close. Okay, and that's it for these surrounding routes. Now all we have is the is that one big area left, which is the cycling road. We'll be headed there next time on Pokemon Leaf Green. Now, for real, I will see you guys then. Happy hunting.